Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather and today we're gonna do Scottish macaroons. No, not macarons, but not the macaroon you're thinking of. It does have coconut in it, but you guys, a couple weeks ago when I was researching some macaron um, templates, I happened across this recipe from Scottish Scran and they're called Scottish macaroons and they have potato in them. I know, I'm so fascinated at this idea that I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna try this and see how good it is and see if my gluten-free friends will really enjoy this kind of cookie. So, and it's four ingredients. We're gonna need mashed potato, not no salt, no cream, nothing, just mashed potato, not mashed potatoes, but just mashed potato. Powdered sugar, unsweetened coconut, and dark chocolate, that's it. Four ingredients, gluten-free, and apparently they're to die for. So if you're ready for this adventure, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cooled mashed potatoes and dump them in a bowl. You are gonna need a wooden spoon or something of that sort. Um, because this needs to be kind of worked with quite a bit, says the directions. The next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna add our powdered sugar a little bit at a time. So I'm just gonna spread this out and just add a bit. Um, the directions also said that this will become runny at one point, but then it should thicken up as we work with it. So we're just gonna, oh yeah, oh that's weird. That lo loosened up quite a bit very quickly. See that? Huh. And a little bit more. So we're just gonna add this whole thing. It's four cups of sugar into that half of a cup of potatoes. That's crazy to me. That seems ridiculous. But that potato is gonna act like a starch and hold these cookies together. If you're watching and you're Scottish, have you ever eaten a Scottish macaroon before? If you are from another country and you have some sort of a cookie or treat that you think that I would have fun making, definitely let me know in the comments below. I love to adventure in my kitchen and doing new things is so much fun to me. Wow, I'm, I'm fascinated at how runny this is. Now somebody's going to ask if you can make this in your, um, mixer or food processor. I'm gonna say probably not, just because if you overwork um, potato, it gets extremely gluey. And I know that this is very gluey right now, but I think it would take it a little bit too far, which is why you should do it by hand. So that's why I'm, I mean, like I like time-saving tools, but when you're dealing with a heavy starch like potato, you definitely want to follow their directions and they said wooden spoon. Also, it didn't say what kind of potato to use, so I used a royal gold potato or Yukon gold. Whew, okay. Let's move on to the next step. Let me give my arm a rest. All right, I'm gonna grab my scale because this says you're supposed to portion these out in about 30 gram balls. So I'm going to assume that my small um, scoop is gonna be plenty big for this, but we're gonna see. All right, so let's see if this small scoop is about 30 grams. Oh, that is 44 grams. So let's try this again, but maybe don't fill up the scoop all the way. There we go, perfect, okay. So we're supposed to roll it into a ball with your hands. Hmm, uh, I think that there's pro, uh, let's just see if you can roll this with your hands. Oh, it's awfully sticky. Oh dear, okay, hold on, hold on. We can do it, we can do it, we can do it. Maybe I should powder sugar my hands? Right, powder sugar on the hands, looks pretty good. And we're gonna take our little dough ball, drop it into my hand, and we'll roll, oh ha, ha ha. Yes, powder sugar your hands, that's perfect. And now we're gonna set them on the tray and press down into a disc. Look at that, perfect, looks like a little disc. All right, onward we go. 
30 grams, drop into your hand, roll it up, set it down and press into a disc. Now, this recipe says it makes about two dozen. So I'm gonna continue to powder sugar my hands. I've never powder sugared my hands before. So this feels a bit weird, but also I feel like this is the only way to do it. Otherwise, this dough is just way stickier than probably is supposed to be, or maybe it's just, I mean, we do have to stick it into the freezer um, to totally set up. So maybe that's just the way that it is. Also, I will tell you, I have resisted all temptation to taste this dough. Even though it was sticking to my hands a second ago, I thought, ooh, I could just taste that. And I'm, nope, let's just wait. Let's wait until we get all the way to the end so that I can get my true reaction on camera. They're holding their shape really well though. I am, I am surprised after the way this dough started to uh, not set up. I thought these were just, would fall into nothingness, but we're going, we're doing all right. Whoa, sticky. I think since these don't have to cook on this pan, because this is literally their final form, um, I think I'm gonna scoot a couple of those together so that I can get all of them on the same pan. All right, last one, rolling up and going down. Okay, didn't quite make 24, but it did make 19. If I would have like weighed them all out, I'm sure it would have made 24, but that's okay. All right, so we're gonna put this into the freezer for about 45 minutes. Okay, it has been 45 minutes and these guys are ready to be dunked and topped. So I may actually put them back into the freezer while I melt the chocolate. We're gonna melt the chocolate in the microwave for 30 seconds, stir 15 seconds, 15 seconds until it's completely melted. Meanwhile, if you haven't already, go ahead and toast half of your coconut and then toss it all together um, with the coconut you haven't toasted. So it looks kind of mottled like this. All right, let's let the dipping commence. Okay, so if your mixture gets hard at any point while you're doing this, go ahead and stick it back into the microwave for 15 seconds so that you can remelt it and continue going. So let's just, uh, yeah, okay, that's easy. And I have my little dipping thing here and we're just gonna put it right into our chocolate, oh yeah. And lift it out. It gets, it gets soft very fast. So um, go quickly, especially in the hot chocolate. All right, get most of it off. And then I haven't decided how exactly I'm gonna do this. So we're just gonna wing it. So I think I'm just gonna dump it in the top of my thing here. How do I get it off of my, okay. I may need another knife. Hold on, how on earth? Okay, I may not use this thing cause it kind of melted to the spatula. All right, don't, don't use that. Instead, we're just gonna use our hands. Okay, we're gonna cover this in the coconut and then we're gonna set it on our baking sheet. Looks beautiful. Now we'll do that again, but this time we're just gonna use our hands because you gotta go faster than that. Cause the, the chocolate is very, oh, oh, just kidding. Don't use your hands. I don't know what to do. Oh, those get soft very quickly. Okay, we're gonna go move back to this. Cause now I have to be able to tap it off. I don't want that much. Oh dear, that was, don't do, okay. I hate dipping things, hate it. Okay, I, I, like, I like that idea. It's just getting it off of this thing is very difficult because it's kind of already melting. Maybe they need to be colder than that or maybe my chocolate is too warm. Maybe I'll give it another second before I... Okay, that is not right. Okay, we're just gonna take a little bit of chocolate, paint over the top of this. No one will know. No one's, nobody's gonna know. See, perfect, uh, in theory. Oh my, okay. Rethink for a second, Heather, okay. Um, 
I'm a tad puzzled because these are very cold still. Like this is so cold, it's like cold. But the chocolate is pretty warm. So maybe if I, I'll use a spatula and I'll first coat the spatula with chocolate. I don't know if this is right. I don't know what I'm doing. Why, why, why do I do these things? And then she'll take off one of these very, very cold potato cakes, put it on there, and then we're just gonna drizzle over the top. Yeah, I like that. That is, I feel like that's a better, whoa, there's so much chocolate everywhere. Um, I feel like that's better. I feel like that, that is the winning combination. Now, let's get some of this chocolate off of here now because that's way too much. And then I'll just kind of shake it a little bit and then we'll put it right, come on. You can come off at any point. Freeze your tools too, oh my. Okay, okay, this is not the way to do it either. There's gotta be a better way. Literally, this is what the instructions said to do. Maybe I'll use a piece of parchment paper. Yep, let's, let's use a piece of parchment paper and see if maybe it won't stick to the parchment paper because this just, it's like hard chocolate now. So that wasn't the idea. That is, that's a right mess. It's fine though. Okay, here's my thoughts. These better be good. That's what my real thought is. But here's my next thought. I'm gonna take a piece of parchment and I'm going to put some chocolate on the parchment like a three-year-old, see? That's totally, that's like a three-year-old. And then I'm going to set it down, pick up my potato sugar cake, flop it right down on there. And then we are going to paint it with some chocolate. I know it's not the correct way to do it, but I literally don't know how to do this and why it's not working. Maybe my mixtures, maybe I needed a little more powdered sugar in my initial mixture so they would harden up a little better. Maybe my freezer wasn't frozen enough. I don't know, but this is working. Now I'm gonna flop this down. Whoa, right there. Oh yeah. Now we're gonna attempt to peel the paper off and the chocolate is gonna stay. No, the, the chocolate is not going to stay. Okay, so new plan, plan number 17. Don't put chocolate on the paper. Instead, just put it on the paper and it should come off. We'll still just paint the tops like we were doing before. Nothing wrong with that. Let's try this again, shall we? Down and then we'll paint it on this side and let it go over the sides. The problem is they're so cold that the chocolate is freezing to everything. Okay, there we go. Bloop. And nope. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, yep. I'll, that's the way we're gonna do it. All right, so somehow we are gonna cover these with chocolate. What, however you can get to the end product, that do that, do that thing. And then we're gonna cover them with our coconut, thus making them into cookie macaron things. All right, I this is a ridiculous. All right, so I'm gonna continue to do this until I cover all 19 of these cookies. And um, if you're in luck, you're gonna see that cut right here. Okay, so if I would have had someone else around to be able to push record again, I would have recorded maybe mid process here. Um, but there's a couple things, if these are good, and you're gonna make them if I ever make these potato dumpling chocolate things again. Um, number one, I think I needed more powdered sugar, which I measured the original recipe had 
the uh, grams, like so the weight measurement, I measured everything out to the T. So, but I, there was a note saying that some potatoes have a little more water. So you might have to add some more, but I added the top of the more. So maybe I needed to add a little bit more on top of that so that when I was making them into balls, they weren't sticky. So, um, if I do this again, I'm going to remember that because I'll watch this video again and be like, are you crazy? Are you really going to make those? They weren't that hard, but this was an exercise in patience. Um, the other thing that I will mention is that, uh, the discs, I think they need to be more like balls before they go into the, um, freezer because as they sat here and kind of warmed up just a little bit, they started to relax into discs anyway. So maybe if they started in balls and you gave them maybe a good hour of freezing time, they wouldn't kind of spread out into like, I mean, they're definitely cookie, but they're not domes like the original post wanted them to be. So that all being said, they don't look half bad. I mean, I wouldn't call them pretty at all at the moment, but that's because they're still not quite set. So we're gonna get them back into the freezer for like 10 minutes. I'll be back when these are ready to come out and we're ready to taste them because I still haven't tasted them. I mean, I, yeah. And I know I wasn't being punked because there was more than one recipe for these Scottish macaroons and they were all generally the same. So it's user error. It's fine, I'll be back. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. It's time to taste these things and decide if this was worth it or I'm crazy. Probably both, but let's taste. All right, out of the freezer, they look identical to when they went in, just a little harder. So let's get some of these off onto the plate here. And I mean, they're cute. Now that they don't have all of the other things around it, um, they're not bad. I'm optimistically happy right here. So we're just gonna lean them up against each other for at least the picture. But they look, I mean, they look like little cookies. So maybe it's fine. Some of them are misshapen though, because they were melting. That's okay. All right, so uh, I'm not I'm not sad about how they look. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut one in half and see what's uh, going on on the inside. Ready for this? Dun dun dun! Look at that. My discs don't look very disc-like, but that's okay. Okay, here we go. We're gonna taste. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's weird. Potato mixture kind of tastes a little bit like truffle. That's actually really good. It's really sweet, but that's good. Oh yeah. So the potato mixture reminds me a lot of the inside of a chocolate covered cherry. You know how they have the cherry and then the goo around it? That's good. All right. So future Heather, this is what you need to do. You need to make sure that your mixture is not sticky because then you can actually roll it and they'll look a little better, but that's good. If you want a fun and different cookie or treat, Scottish macaroons are actually pretty good. They don't taste like potato at all. I think they would also be really good if you put some pecans or some kind of nut in it as well. So that there was something kind of crunchy alongside the hard chocolate. Um, they are very rich. You could probably only eat one. So probably what I'll do is I will store these in the freezer and then when we want a treat, we can take it out and chomp on it. But I would make them again. You know, for a little bit there, I thought this was going sideways because they were just kind of bleh. But I'm glad I stuck it out. I'm really glad that I did this adventure all together because that's going to be something that that might become one of my Christmas cookies. They're that good. All right, you guys. Well, that's it. Scottish macaroons. I hope you enjoyed that adventure. If you did, 
give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. I am kind of wanting to try lots of things from all over the place because normal is boring. And if you have a regional cuisine that you would like me to try um, and make here on the channel, I would love to consider it. So be sure to leave me a comment. Otherwise, you guys, I will see you on the next adventure. Bye. It's gluten-free, but man, it is not sugar-free. It's a lot of sugar. That's really good.